January 4, 1902, The Freeman, Indianapolis, Indiana. Henry O. Tanner, The Artist, a distinguished Negro artist attracting attention. No prejudice in Paris. His success is an idea of the possibilities of the race. Not many Americans know that Henry O. Tanner, the distinguished artist whose paintings attract so much attention in Europe, and one of which has been hung in the Luxembourg Palace, Paris, is an American Negro. This fact I had impressed upon me during the summer of 1899 when I happened to be spending a short vacation in Paris. I had remarked to a group of American friends that I was going to Luxembourg Palace to see a painting by a young Negro artist when they expressed astonishment and thought me much in error. Afterward, they were convinced of the truthfulness of my statement and were themselves soon on the way to see it. They were proud to claim Mr. Tanner as a fellow countryman. Mr. Tanner is the oldest of seven children, two sons, five daughters. His father, Right Reverend Benjamin Tucker Tanner, is a member of the Bishop's Council of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Henry Tanner was born at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, June 21, 1859, and early gave promise of becoming an artist. A few fugitive drawings attracted attention and proved to his parents and friends that he possessed, to a marked degree, surprising talent as an artist. His first painting of importance was Narragansett Bay. The bagpipe lesson, which shortly followed, was bought by a wealthy Philadelphian and occupies a place in his home. An ambition to study at the Art Center of the World led Mr. Tanner to go, in January 1891, to Paris, where he has since resided. He has struggled hard and has had many obstacles to overcome, but he has been patient and has succeeded grandly. Thousands of artists who go to Paris from all parts of the world never become known, but continue to the end unhonored in obscurity. It is because of a knowledge of this fact that Mr. Tanner's friends are so proud of his success. Nothing has served to turn him from his great ambition. Persistent study and an ever-spurring determination to succeed have had everything to do with his success. He is becomingly modest and, though much honored and greatly praised, continues the even tenor of his way. No color prejudice is to be met in Paris. A man's a man for that and that. It seems quite natural, then, that Mr. Tanner should permanently remain near the scenes of his triumphs. He has achieved the honor for which every artist who goes to Paris aspires, namely the selection of one of his paintings for exhibition in the Luxembourg Palace. During the lifetime of an artist, no painting is ever hung in the palace known as the Louvre, but I confidently believe that Mr. Tanner, considering his prominence, will be accorded even this distinguished honor when he dies an event which I trust is still far off. The painting, which hangs in the Luxembourg Palace, is The Raising of Lazarus, a realistic piece of work which has attracted and will continue to attract the admiration of all who have seen it. Mr. Tanner possesses a deeply religious nature, and his latest and more pretentious paintings are of biblical subjects. Among these may be mentioned his Daniel in the lion's den, the Jew's wailing place, the flight into Egypt, and the Annunciation, a beautiful treatment of the most stupendous moment in the history of Christendom. Mr. Tanner works slowly, carefully, producing as a rule but one painting a year. He likes to get close to the scenes which he portrays and has spent two winters in the Holy Land. It was while on one of these visits that his flight into Egypt and the Jews' wailing place were conceived. His rendering for the Paris Exposition was a painting entitled Christ in the Temple. It was a pleasure to meet and know Mr. Tanner. 
He is lovable of disposition and possesses warm sympathies. He is striking in appearance and would attract attention in any gathering of men. He is proud of his race, has faith in its possibilities, and is deeply conscious of the fact that he, as one of its representatives, is on trial to prove its right to be seriously considered in the world of art. I have the fullest and most complete faith in his future. He will succeed even more grandly than he has already succeeded. The high place he has already won is sure promise of what is to come. Mr. Tanner's success as a painter is to me a prophecy of the possibilities of the Negro along with the higher lines of attainment. Mr. Charles W. Chestnut, Mr. Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and Dr. W. E. Du Bois, not to mention others, are also to be named in this connection. In the years to come, we shall have many increasing evidences of the fact that the Negro is making his way into all lines of attainment in which other races are prominent. I make this assertion because I believe and know that my race is thoroughly capable of assimilating the higher instruction and is, when permitted to receive the training, fitted to enter upon any of the pursuits, aesthetic or otherwise, as other men and women are. We have too many successful examples of thoroughly educated men and women who are making their way for me to entertain any belief to the contrary that could be considered a virtual indictment of the mental capacity of my race. The future, in my opinion, is to bring us many colored men and women who will distinguish themselves in art, in science, in literature, and in statesmanship. I have always contended, and now maintain, that we shall hasten the coming of such a class of men and women by laying sure the foundation of the race in agriculture, mechanics, domestic employment, and other occupations that are fundamental and basic and necessary for the higher development of any race. It is very interesting to note that the trend of educated colored men and women is more and more each year in the right direction. They are beginning to see that industrial or material education does not mean a limitation or cramping of the aspirations of the race. Young colored men and women are taking the highest courses in mental development and then are using their mental strength in some line of industrial occupation. They will be all the more efficient in whatever industry they choose because of their mental strength. One of the most encouraging things I have noticed in this direction was the finding very recently of four bright young colored men in a Western College of Agriculture who had before going there finished an advanced literary course. These young men are now mastering agriculture with a view of coming to the South and teaching it or encouraging activity in it for profit. In proportion as these young men assist in laying the foundation of the race in agriculture, the time will be hastened when the Negro will begin to develop naturally and solidly along the higher walks of life. Tuskegee, Alabama. This article used by the kindly permission of the Congregationalist and Christian World of Boston, Mass. October 20, 1906, The Afro-American Ledger, Baltimore, Maryland. Tanner wins art prize. Son of Bishop Tanner, the successful competitor. Chicago, October 16. Henry O. Tanner, a Negro artist, was yesterday awarded the N.W. Harris Prize of $500 for the best painting at the 19th Annual Exhibition of American Paintings, which will open at the Art Institute tomorrow. The subject of Mr. Tanner's picture is Two Disciples at the Tomb. The award was unanimous. The picture shows the faces of Peter and John before the tomb of the Savior, with a fine light playing across their features, which is strained with expectancy while awaiting the fulfillment of the promise that had been made them. Mr. Tanner is the son of Bishop Benjamin Tucker Tanner of the AME Church. 